year I did a uh, falsetta tutorial in dedication to Paco so um, on the anniversary this year I'd like to do the same these are uh, two other falsettas from about the same time period uh, from 1972 and again from uh, Punta del Faro um, uh, the first falsetta from Punta del Faro and the second one um, uh, he, he did several times with uh, Camarón and um, uh, with the uh, his brother in a video, so it's pretty um, famous falsetta. Um, it has a fast picado at the end. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and show you these um, pretty slow at first, and um, <clears throat> maybe I'll point out a couple of rhythmical details. Um, these two falsettas are a little bit more straightforward rhythmically. They have a couple of contrabeat in melodies, but other than that, the accent patterns and the phrasing is pretty clear. Follows the uh, 12 beat structure, in other words, cuadrado compas uh, of Bolidius. So, and harmonically, they're not too crazy. <clears throat> so, I'm going to show you the first one very slow. It starts off with a pickup note um, to the 12, so count 11, in other words. So, you can work on coming in on that pickup note from the compas. I miss it half the time, actually. So you gotta catch this E on the on the fourth string. Okay, and then after that pickup note, you can grab this chord on the twelve. Um, this type of melody here is is uh, pretty much borrowed right from Mario Scudero's Impetu. So it's, it's kind of a similar um, harmonic idea, um, but he's got a little bit of a swing to it that's a little different. So um, we start with that chord and then we do a pull off. Now normally the melody could go down to G here but what we're going to do is slide up and do the G an octave lower. This kind of tricks your ear melodically there. So then we have the bass note here and then we can just grab these two. It's really a G minor chord or G minor 7 but I'm just grabbing these two strings. The four and the three. to the C on the fifth fret of the third string. Okay. And then we have the A and the E open together. Uh, oh, sorry, there's a D under the bar here. Second string, D, and then A and E together. Okay. Now you do a little answer there, 7, 8, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay, and I just do an AMI type radio here. that phrase but with a slight variation okay now that's actually a little trickier than it looks it starts the same but here we do instead of like uh, quarter notes like right on the beats we do it double time and then we're going to change the G to a G sharp bass note here Again, so it's again B flat, C, D under both bass notes. Okay, and 
Oh, we grab these together, sorry. So we grab this chord, which is your B flat 7 inverted. Okay, and then I have to use a different finger because I, I occupy this one for the D. So I usually use my index, I think, when I'm going fast. Or actually middle, thumb and, and middle. Now here, it's interesting, instead of doing the little tapping or rajeo answer, we just do a little arpeggio. And that's just an I, M, A arpeggio and end with the bass note. Okay, there's a little pause after the, after the A finger. Okay, now that's going to be our, the bass notes are count nine, I believe. So we have 12, 3, 6, 10, right? 11, 12. Here we're gonna do this. Sometimes I do this fingering. When I'm not thinking too hard about it. Right? Um, but you can do A chord like this. Either way. We have this A shape, we have a C sharp, and we're gonna do uh, picado, kind of accented on the B. Um, 10, 11, 10, 11, 12. So we have this uh, chord change here to a B flat major seven. Seven is B flat F A D. Then we have an open E. Sorry. Open E. And this is a C with the added uh, ninth, the D note here. Okay. Now here where it gets a little bit interesting harmonically, we have an F bass note and a C sharp up top. So that's actually an augmented interval. Um, if you heard the A natural in the it's kind of an augmented chord, right? But here's the interesting part. He does this. So this is kind of a little chromatic phrase. Um, if you know your scale um, in Validius, we have A, Phrygian. And we can use the C natural and also the C sharp sometimes. The A chord has the C sharp. So what he's doing is just making use of the Phrygian scale but over top of the F chord bass, which is kind of unique. Gives it almost kind of a bluesy sound. Okay. Okay. Now here we have uh, basically an F7 uh, shape. And I'm just using P, I, M, A for this chord. And again, we have a on the beat accent with the melody here. Uh, we'll call them pickup notes. Uh, to the accents, right? So again, from the B flat, C. Okay, there's an extra D play note you play there, and then. And these I play tirando, except I play with the thumb, uh, apoyando on the bass. Okay, and you can break the chord or grab it however you like. I think breaking the chord is nicer. You just have to get it a little early in the time. Okay, here's another Escudero kind of phrase, like from Impetu, where we have the G minor bar, a hammer pull on the third string. Oh, we got the A on the with the pinky, and then we have our B flat inverted, normally like this, right? But we're gonna add the C note, so it's actually a ninth. Okay, and then we have the um, resolution here, C sharp, B flat, and A. Okay, and I accent that with the golpe. Okay, <clears throat> now all those little accented parts with the chords are very. The thing I like about this falsetto is it goes through a lot of different chords, but the, all the rhythms are very clearly outlining. The accent pattern, the typical one everybody likes to talk about. 12, 3, 6, 8, 10. So um, again from the beginning. 12, 6, sorry, it's 12, 3, 6, 10. Right? 12, 3, 6, 10, 12, 3, 6, 10, 11, 12, 3, 6. Now here, 
Uh, at this point, I have time to do just this little bit of a little uh, accent there on the 7, 8. This is 6, 6, 7, 8. that open A is seven actually six seven eight okay so that's eight and actually eight and. now we're gonna leave a space for nine and again we did those little accents ten eleven twelve this time we're gonna do a hair early okay okay and because they're on the contra beat now we have to do three of them instead of just two so if you remember this part it's just two ten eleven twelve now we're like and 10 and 11 and 12, all right? And this is where it gets a little trickier in terms of syncopation because you don't want to fall off the beat. And if you listen to the recording slow, he plays a little on the back end of the beat, which is uh, what we call swing, right? So you gotta be careful of that phrasing there. Okay, so this whole part is a very similar phrase to the one we just did but it's a little more syncopated with some swing, sonicete, right? This is just a regular C this time. And on the D, again the contra beat. Right? But you only get two this time because we we let that that accent ring out on the 12. 12, 3. Now here on the 6, I'm reaching down to a, an F sharp and an A. Okay, and if you want, you can grab it with a D open too. Or you can get all four strings. This is basically a D inverted. Now this is always a tricky spot for me. I like to do it this way. Or slide. It doesn't really matter how you get to the G, but you only need the G in octave. So you just have the third fret and the open G there. Okay. Now again, uh, we're in the same spot here. That's our resolution. Um, but we're going to have those pickup notes on the contra beats again. But this time it's just the open G string. So our left hand is free, but we still need to feel that swing on the off beat. Okay. So now we have the open G, and we can just slap on the the bar for the 12th beat accent. Okay, and then the melody it comes up to the C on the fifth fret here. Okay. okay, like that. Okay, once I get the A the A flat or the G sharp here, so we break it apart, bass and then the chord. Those are back on the beat. Um, as a quarter notes, say. Okay. Now comes a very interesting phrase. Um, again, it's not terribly syncopated or crazy, but it's very interesting and it's a little bit tricky, so it can can throw you off at first. Okay. So we're basically doing this typical hammer pull off in the second position half bar. Okay. We have the. C sharp D and B flat and A. <clears throat> and we're going to go down to the G in the bass and then grab the triad up here. <clears throat> so obviously that's a G7 inverted with the 7 from the bass here. Okay, and that comes starting on the B. So, specifically on the 6th beat accent. Okay, now we're gonna let that hold. I think this might be beat nine. Yeah, it's feeling three. It's six, seven, eight, nine. And then we're gonna do again on the twelfth beat a similar phrase, but this time as triplets. So triple time. We do that twice in a row. Now the trick to playing this fast <coughs> and smooth: just keep your right hand on the beat, plucking accents. So I'm just doing this with the right hand. And I'm making my left hand do all the work. So we have a hammer pull, just to pull off. And then a hammer with the pinky to the fourth string. 
<coughs> but you don't have to really play it. You just hammer it. It'll sound when you go fast. You can practice that as an accent, as an exercise. Okay? And then what we do is just, with the fingers again, pluck on the next beat. Here. You do that twice in a row. That'll be your 12 and your 3 accent, okay? So again, from the 6th beat, okay, that one's slow, those are like 8th notes, or yeah, regular 8th notes, and we do with the triplet phrase, okay? Now here's where it gets a little bit strange, timing-wise, <clears throat> and you can hear it but when I put on the palm, so I'll put that on again, just so you can hear it. Um, we have a low E, and we do it again. But the thing about it is, is that low E kind of shifts things over into a weird place in the compass. Okay? It's almost like it comes in the wrong spot. And what we do to make up for it is we just wait. We'll wait as the compass goes by uh, two beats, and then we get on back on track with the 12th beat with the next phrase. And that phrase is going to be the same kind of pattern, but up a fret here on the third fret. Okay, and it's diatonic, meaning we keep all the notes in the scale, but we move up. So it's a different fingering here. So let me go through that part. Okay, now this time instead of plucking that last beat, I'm still doing this with the right hand. This time I'm going to play a single note here, or you can do a tirando if you want. But then we're going to go into a piccato right away. So that's important for the right hand to understand. Okay, something like that. So the left hand does this. That's going to be 3 and 5. And then we have uh, 3 and 5 again here. And then our hammer is going to be all the way up here, A this time. Right? Now here's where our single note comes in. And then we do picado. Okay, picado is going to start down here, okay? And picado is going to be the fourth string, whole steps from the third fret. And then we just have two notes here, then the D here under the bar. And then we're going to skip up to the pinky on the sixth fret. And then we'll play the fifth fret with the bass down here. Now you gotta be careful with this part because we have to jump very quickly after this. So we pull up to that beat, but it's almost like you can just barely get it in there because we gotta jump right away down here to the first position, okay? Okay, that's a tricky move that you wanna practice a little bit. Okay, now before I go any further, I just wanna put on the the beat for you one more time so you can hear that um, accent uh, with those triplet pull-offs that is kind of tricky. Okay. One more time. You can start on the 12 or the 6, it doesn't really matter, it's, it's a pretty symmetrical phrase. I'm going to start with the slow part and then the fast triplets again. Okay. Uh, we'll do it a little bit slower one more time. Okay. So coming back down here. Um, this is a pretty interesting phrase. We're just going to use the thumb here, pulgar, and kind of do this drag across um, apoyando. Sorry, the hammer, hammer first. And then we have this under the bar. And then I reach up to the fifth fret with the pinky. Okay? And I'm just dragging across with the thumb to the, get the B flat. Here I have what looks like a C chord shape, but I'm just dragging across the fifth and the fourth. 
Now here's a little trick, you gotta jump up to the third position to get this chord. It looks like a G minor, but it's really just a B flat, because um, I'm only playing from the fifth string. Okay, and I pull off to the B flat here. And then we're gonna do a similar type of phrase, but now we got the open string, so we don't need to do a bar. little place where we can put a little bit of a, a vibrato on there or a little, a little bend on it you know to give it a little bit of a flavor I always feel if I make it up to that point without too many mistakes I've done a good job and I can uh, get it get that melody coming out okay but you don't want to do it too too much and lose compass you got to be right on the beat with this thing now the next phrase is really nice um, because this is another way to do a remate, really. Okay. Okay, with this little staccato punch here, it's really nice. Okay. Now that's going to be our twelve feet, I believe. That's you know typical remate, like you would in solea practically. So we do this little phrase which I really like a lot. Okay, and this is a very nice, you know, old school polydius type of phrase that goes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, just like a escobilla for the baile, right? time. And I'm just doing AMI here. P -A -M -I. Here I just do hammer from nowhere. And then here I reach over and do a whole steps this way. Because my pink, my middle is already here. Okay. And here's our famous uh, Okay, we just do a chromatic phrase here. Okay, and then we do this picado. This is always a tricky one for a lot of people for a couple of reasons. You got to move your arm up to get a good orientation on the strings. It's a D string open, C sharp, B flat, A. And uh, the phrasing is uh, the other tricky part. This is a pickup note. So you feel a triplet, but you have a pickup note. Okay. Right. So one more time. Okay, and that's the end. Um, but you might hear this phrase used a lot. And the trick again is the the, the timing to have that pickup note. Da -da 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 -da. Sometimes that might be a little bit slower with that first note. But you, once you get to the C sharp, you got to do clear triplets. Bop, 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 bop. Okay. And uh, that's pretty much the end of the first falsetto. So um, again, work on it slow. And uh, try to put it together with your foot, and you know the accents in this particular process are pretty clear, except for that one little spot that I demonstrated, which is a little weird. Uh, but that's it. All right. So the next falsetta, again, just like the one we just did, has a pickup note, very similar. In fact, it's the same thing as what we did here. Right. Same kind of idea rhythmically. So it's kind of a pickup note. Um, coming off of the eighth beat. Now we can't. The other falsetto was a little bit easier because we had something going on there with what came what came right before it. Right, we had this kind of thing first. Right, and the other 
short time we had this. Right, to get into it. So we have to think of something similar to just get this thing started off the right way. And uh, this is the way I like to do it. So in the compas, 6, 8, 10. Think about my 6, 8, 10. 6, 8. Just get my 6 and my 8. And then that's it. I can start my piccata right there. 6, 8. Right? So I have my 8 half stroke. And then I start my falsetto on the next contrabeat. And 10, and 11, and 12. Right? Now it's not a B flat. This time I'm thinking it uh, like a, G minor, a D minor. Okay? But we just have the D, F in the bass here. I do a little trill there on the D and the C sharp. Now here's like a G7. Right, but inverted. B in the bass. And then I go to a regular old C. Okay. Okay. Now here I'm going to grab a... Right. This is going to be an F sharp in the bass. And here I have B flat and A. And then when I do that A, I just slide up these two fingers. And I can grab the D also with that. Okay. So it's almost a uh, Baroque sounding cycle of fifths. This is a typical cycle of fifths. So the next phrase. I slide this guy back again. And here I like to do an E with the B flat. And here we just have a chromatic phrase. Okay. Now, um, I think what Paco does here on, I only saw partial videos where you see the right hand. But he moves up to this position and does an arpeggio or eramate up in the fifth position. I like to do it down low and just do your typical hard driving rhythmical answer. Okay, with the um, again the eighth beat accent happening there. Okay, this is just my uh, eighth beat. So that the last. Resolution the six, and then our chord answer is eight. So again, we start the next phrase on the contra beats, and it's the same phrase as the first one. It's just now we're changing notes. So don't let that mess you up. If you want to, you can use the open E maybe to keep you on track. That helps some people keep on the beat um, more clearly. So anyway, um, again, this is going to be N10, N11, N12, N12, okay, and then sets us up for this D minor triad here, okay, that we're going to play. This is all Pulgar, this part, okay, and you might have heard this in an old Sigaria, so he's kind of uh, evoking that kind of arpeggio melody with the Pulgar. Now here it gets a little bit a little bit syncopated. He's gonna use the open G on the contra beat. So we stop on this note, and those are our little contra accents. Okay. Now we're gonna do another pull off. And this pull off I like to accent a little bit with the golpe. straight eighth notes and I want you to do as many 
pick notes as you can. There's just a couple pull-offs happening. Okay, there's a hammer here. And the rest I pick it. Up to the F. Open G. And we jump up to the B flat. Okay, one more time. stop on that B flat and set up another contra kind of phrase. Okay. Okay, so you gotta get feeling that time. We got a little click in between the notes there. Now here is um, where I take a little artistic liberty. Let me show you what Paco does and then you know you can, and then what I do is a little different. At this point, Paco moves up to the third position and does a bar. And does our scale like this. Very familiar kind of phrase. Pull off down to the B flat and then just go up the scale with the pulgar. Up to the F on the D string and then jump up with the pinky to the A note. And then back down in an arpeggio kind of way rather than a uh, scale way. So A, F, D. Okay? One more time. Okay? And we do another pause here on the contra beat. It's very similar to this one. Okay? One more time. And then I shift down here and I have C sharp with the pinky. That's our end of our phrase before the the picado, which is the real challenging part. So one more time, that whole phrase. Now what I do, I say I take an artistic liberty. Instead of playing this here, I do it this way. School Sigidia style. Now, the problem with it compared to the other version is that this note is coming out weaker than this one. That's really the main difference. And then, um, but I kind of like the little, the little whistle you get off of the third string versus just the fourth. It's a little bit warmer sounding, right? And what you have to do is this. It's a little bit more challenge for the thumb, I think. But I like the sound of that one a little bit better than this one. So I'll let you make your own mind which one you like the sound of better. For this. Okay. Now here's the picado. Again, um, I take a little artistic liberty and I'll explain why in a second. Um, pretty much this is the way Paco's doing the picado. Start with the M finger and alternate. Okay, this is after the 12 piece. So 12, and then we start on 1. So this phrase is very much like a solea escovia. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Right? 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So there's three uh, rounds of six phrases. And they're right on the beat. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And they stop on the 6, and the 12, and then the following 6. Um, this is the right hand pattern. Start with middle and alternate. Okay. Now, if you, uh, let me show you the note slow. It starts with D, open. D, E, F, up to the G, up to A. Okay, and then we go back to open G. And they're triplets, one and a, two and a. Now here's our accent, beat three, the high note. Okay, it's a B flat. We come down to F, and then we go back up to A and down the scale. But we end on the sixth beat with C on the third fret. Okay, one more time. One, two, three, four, five, six. A little slower. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Um, that's
that's the first phrase he does. Then he takes that same exact phrase and moves it up to the fifth position on the same strings to the exact same thing. Okay, exactly the same phrase, just in the fifth position. Okay. Now the last one is where I really like to change things. He does a completely different pattern here, um, starting on the C note. Okay, but still the same right hand, alternating with M. Okay. Now there's a change of the scale here, it goes to an E flat, notice that. Okay, one more time. One, two. I'm not as comfortable with the fast picking as some players. I, I learned a lot of patterns with a pick when I was younger. So it, it makes sense for me to translate patterns to the left hand in a kind of a repetitive way. So what I did was I changed, well I changed a couple things. First of all, I didn't like doing this other type of voicing for that scale. Because this one starts on the lower note and then crosses over at the end, I wanted to do the same kind of thing for the last pattern. So instead of doing it in this position, I do it in the third position. So I do whole steps here. So basically I have that same phrase, it's just it's diatonic now rather than symmetrical. But then when I get to the E flat, it turns into a, the symmetrical pattern. So I have the sixth fret here. So then I end up on the B flat down here in a different position. And for me that just made a lot more sense, uh, especially for my picking, my fast picking. But let me show you, one way I, I learned to develop the speed on this is to just do it as a legato, the whole thing. And this is a way you can actually interpret it if you feel like you're not at the speed yet with the right hand picados. And as a legato, this is what happens. So you get to do a little drag across here with the thumb. So that's something you can practice and get the speed up. get a little bit quicker than you could ever do with the picado, literally. Uh, we want to be able to do picado, but anyway, I'm going to show you another trick I do to get this thing to work for me. Anyway, it works for me. And we can come up here and do the same thing. Now, obviously, it's fast, but it's not as strong as a picado. It's a weaker sound. Right? And then here, the same thing. might not be comfortable with this whole step, so you can do it this way as well. What I recommend though is to do this fingering here when you get to the E flat change. That means you're going to have to end up with this kind of weird note with this finger. If you can avoid it, try to end with a pinky. Okay. Anyway, so those are my three phrases. Picado. Okay, that you can practice as a legato. Now, I said I took another artistic liberty. That is, when I do the picado, I actually start with a different finger. I always feel more comfortable starting with I when I do a fast run like this. Because to get over that string, it's more comfortable for me to grab it with the M. So what I do is one little pull up. Just there. And that helps me get this thing going pretty quick and smooth for me. Um, obviously it doesn't sound, it might kind of sound like a little bit of a hiccup there, but at least it comes close to that accented beat anyway. Okay. The other thing is, I pref I don't like the feel of these thicker strings up here. It sounds nice, didn't it? but what I like is the skinnier strings up here. And I think that it, it's more comfortable, more fun for me anyway, to do it in, in this position. Now the only thing weird is I have to do this weird cross here that some people don't like to do, which one finger has to reach over to get that D note. That's the only awkward part. But it works for me. Okay, and then again the 
last part. Here. Sometimes when we're going real fast, I mess up and put it play an A flat here. Anticipating my E flat. That's a mistake, but you know, what are you gonna do? When you're going fast, what's really important is the compass anyway. <laughs> Towards the end, I am doing uh, very different because I end up in this position. I'm just hitting the B flat and then putting the ninth, just making this like a, making it more like an eleven chord voice. Okay. Uh, whereas if you went end up here, I think Parker was B flat C B flat like that. You know, so I'm doing this. Bit different. Um, anyway, and then the last phrase is this. Okay, so I'm doing a hammer up to the seventh from the third position. Okay, and that's it. And then, uh, uh, Palenico. And you're done. Um, this is a, the one little tricky thing to jump down with this finger. I just kind of try to roll it down into a position. Okay, uh, one more time this falsetta a little bit slower. Um, just so you can hear how it flows at a slower tempo. So you know what? Let me use a uh, compass track um, to make it like crystal clear um, what's going on with this one. So do uh, so we have a little anyway, tempo. This tempo. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Hopefully you'll be able to work through that at your own pace. And uh, we'll see you next time.